Hi folks, Christy from Shark Pixel here, and in today's video, I am going to teach you a different method on how to remove unwanted objects using Photoshop. So we have all been there. We have all had something in our photograph that we are trying to remove. And if you have checked out my recent video on removing unwanted objects in Photoshop, you definitely know all the cool tips and tricks that are hidden within the um, content aware fill dialog box that is now an option in Photoshop. But let me tell you that while it may work for 90% of our fixes and removals, we are going to need another option or another way or a backup method to get rid of some of the more hard elements to try and remove in Photoshop. And that's where this video is gonna come in super helpful. So as you can see here, I do have an image of a temple and I do have another image of a temple, the exact same temple. But if we look here in the middle, we have got this terrible light post that is just ruining my photograph. So this is going to require a little bit of pre-planning. And what I mean by that is I took a photo of the temple and then I took one or two steps to the side and I took another photo of the exact same temple from a slightly different vantage point. So that's what you're going to need. If you haven't done that yet and you still wanna learn this technique, please feel free to download the images within the description. There's going to be these two images so that you can follow along and really understand how this technique works. And also in that downloadable item, you're gonna get a PDF of creative composites and really how to let your mind go free and elevate your photography using compositing. So that is definitely a PDF worth viewing. But let's get back to the topic at hand. So we've got our two different photographs of our temple and we need to get rid of the lamp post that we see in the middle. So what we'll do is we'll take our Shark Pixel Demo 01 PSD. We're going to select all, Command or Control A. We're going to hit Command or Control C to copy all of that data. We will switch over to our Shark Pixel Demo 02 file and then hold down Shift and then hit Command or Control plus V to paste the layer. Now we have both of our pictures in the same Photoshop document, just as different layers. Our first step is going to be to select both of our layers over here in our layers palette. So we'll click on the first one, we'll hold down shift, and we'll click on the background layer as well. Next, we're going to come to our edit menu. We're going to choose auto align layers. And for the projection, what we wanna do is just choose auto because it's going to allow Photoshop to use all of its mathematical equations in order to really get us the best possible result. Then we're going to press okay. And fun fact, that command, auto align layers, is actually the first command that gets run when you are stitching images together like a panorama. That's that first step. It's unbeknownst to you because um, you don't really need to incrementally do, give the commands for stitching your images together. Photoshop knows how to do that. So this is just that first step that you have. So Photoshop has actually gone in and actively aligned the two different images of our temple. So that's very helpful. We're going to select our layer one and then we're going to add a mask to it. So we'll come down to the add layer mask button on our layer one. We're going to zoom in here. We will make sure that we are activating our brush tool. So if you're not activated on this tool, just hit the B key on your keyboard. And then we're going to make sure that we are indeed painting with black as our foreground color. Next, we'll come in here and we'll just start to paint out the, um, the area of the lamp post. And I'm not sure about if you can see this, but the, the way Photoshop has been able to align 
almost perfectly the two images that I, I've taken photos of is pretty astonishing. Now, if this were something that you were doing freehand, my word, this would take you quite, quite a long time to do, okay? There are a few areas that we need to clean up. For example, right here. So in that situation, I would create a new layer. I'd activate my clone stamp. I'm going to sample on a uh, one of these little awning, these red areas here. Come up there, align that, and then paint using my clone tool to just remove that one bit of that speaker. So, and let's come in here because I see another issue. Needs a little bit of fixing. Okay. Ah, come on. Help me out here. All right. So, I don't know about you, but this was not going to work with the Content Aware Fill dialog box. And I'll show that in the next step. But what I want you to take from this course is that there are always going to be multiple ways and methods in Photoshop to do the exact same thing. And I want to teach you different ways to complete your objective because it's a guarantee that one way of doing something is not going to work 100% of the time. So I want to give you all the tools that you have in order to make your life easier and your retouching experience just that much better. Now, let me show you what would happen if we used the um, content aware fill command. I'll show you how it doesn't work. Come back to our first image. I'm going to just duplicate the background layer. Hold down lasso, hold down the L key, make a selection around my lamppost. Then I'm gonna choose edit, bring it to content aware fill. And even though Photoshop is activating an incredible amount of data for its fix, you can see here that if we look over, it's just completely jumbled. It's just such an intricate, um, beautiful building that Photoshop has had a really rough time trying to align everything properly. And that's okay. Like we said, the content aware fill dialog box is gonna work for probably 90% of your fixes, but you are going to need that other option for the times when it doesn't work. And that's what this is for. This is kept in your back pocket so that you know if content aware fill doesn't work for some reason and you don't wanna painstakingly clone all of those different angles one by one, you have this method in the back of your pocket if you were able to photograph the, um, whatever the object is from slightly different uh, locations. That's gonna allow you to make retouching that item out an absolute breeze. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe if you've learned something new and also like and leave a comment. Help me out, let me know what kind of videos you wanna see next. And as always, I will see you on the next course.